Well, praise the Lord again, as I shared, uh, Minister Gloria Beller, who is a minister at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, praise God. She currently serves as, serves as the president of the Willing Workers uh, Ministry there at First Baptist. Her previous ministry involvement included several things, but one of which was serving as a chaplain for the Feed the Hungry Ministry for three, three different terms. So she's a woman of God who loves the Lord and a, and a friend who I appreciate much in the Lord. And so we want to welcome her and let her share what God has put on her heart. Come on, my dear. Uh, well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, first, before I even get started, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Reverend Letty Carr for inviting me. This is truly an honor and I consider it a blessing. And I'm, I'm just glad to be in the presence of, of God's people. Amen. And uh, I would just like to talk just a little because I've heard other people talking about prayer and why we pray and what we pray. Uh, I truly believe that uh, what we pray is, uh, should be preceded as to why we pray. What we pray, if you remember uh, the Lord's Prayer, and in Luke 1, uh, one of the disciples says, teach us how to pray. So first of all, let me say, that shows you the credence the importance of prayer. So at any rate, uh, when he asked him to teach us how to pray, Jesus started by saying, our father, which you are in heaven. So when you think about our father, that's personal. Not only is it personal, it's a father child relationship. Our father, which is in heaven, that's a praise. Thy name, thy name is special. So it lets you see that Prayer is significant. And what about prayer? Is that what do we do? What do we say? Do we pray out of duty? Do we pray out of form of fashion? Do we pray out of habit? Well, I would like to tell you that, or do we pray? I'm sorry, let me, I left this one out. Do we pray out of need? And if you pray out of need, it's okay. Because God knows our needs. That's why he said our daily bread because he provides us to meet our needs, just right where we are. But the one thing that's important is that God invites us. He gives us an invitation to come and pray with him so that we can have the joy of fellowshipping, of being in his very presence. So that's what makes it so significant because God wants that time with him. It's me and him. It's you and him. It's the time when we have together when he can say that I know you and he can answer your prayers right where they are, right where you are, anytime, any place. He recognizes that we need him and he needs us. So he lets us to come into his holy temple to give us grace and to give us strength. And the other thing about it, not only does he want that relationship with us, but he invites us in so that we can experience that divine purpose and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit brings us that power that we can talk to the enemy and we can say, get thee behind me, Satan. We can talk to that spirit of discomfort and say, come and comfort me. We can talk to that spirit of grief and say, come and bring me joy. We can talk to the enemy and tell the enemy, hey, you will not take my anointing. You will not take my appointment. You will not capture my assignment because I know who I am. So God gives us that praying spirit that we can come into the holies of holies, that we can pray to him, that we can have that personal relationship with him. God wants a relationship with us. I remember a time when I was a little girl and my grandmother was Episcopalian and the church was real quiet, but she would leave her church after the service and she would go over and meet one of her girlfriends who would belong to the uh, Lord Jesus Christ Church and we used to call them the, I'm, I'm not making light, but we used to call them the Holy Rollers. But I tell you what, as soon as you got to the door, Jesus met you right where you were. And the thing that I thought was so significant 
is that the little ladies would be, some would have their Bibles in their hand and some would have a white cloth and a white handkerchief. And then the men would have their tambourines and one would be on the drums. But when they prayed, you knew that they weren't really praying to get stuff. They were praying to get to God. Mm. And that's one thing where we are right now. God wants us to have a place with him. He wants us to seek him early. He wants us to pray to him that he can give us the strength, that he can give us the grace, that he can give us what we need to go through. Because prayer is the lifeline. Prayer is our challenge to the true and the living God. He's the true and the living God that makes everything come alive. He's the God of truth. So the thing about the, the when we say the divine purpose, the divine uh, knowledge of knowing him of who he is, he brings us into the point where we know him and we accept him as the true and living God. I remember this song that said, uh, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. So that's the other thing about prayer. Prayer brings about change. It will change you. It may change the situation. It will change the nation. It will change the country because God is also about change. And I know when, when I was talking about my grandmother going to the church that you would hear some of the old ladies, they would be singing and they would say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee for there's no other help I know. And that was the thing that really, really blessed my heart because I was saying, when I get bigger, I want to pray like that where some would be prostrated on, the, on the, uh, uh, the floor of the church. And some would, like I said, would have their Bibles and some would just have their little white handkerchief going around praying to God. Some would be silent and some would just be saying, glory to your name, O God, because they knew that prayer was the answer, that God invites you into a relationship. God invites you to experience his divine purpose and also the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we can say, the Lord is my shepherd. That's a relationship. I shall not want that supply. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That's rest. He leadeth me beside the still water. That's refreshment. He restoreth my soul. That's healing. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness, that's guidance. For his name's sake, that's purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's testing. I will fear no evil, that's protection. For thy art with me, that's faithfulness. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, that's discipline. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, that's hope. I'm anointed, I anointed my head with oil, that's concentration. My cup runneth over, that's abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, that's blessing. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord, that's security. Forever and ever and ever, and ever. That's eternity. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. We appreciate that encouragement. Now we're going to open up the prayer lines and let's pray like we know, saints. <laughs> open the prayer lines now. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Father, we bless you today and we thank you, God, for having a relationship with us and inviting us to pray. We don't even fully comprehend, Lord, why you're mindful of man or care about us, but we are so glad you do and so glad you are. We ask you now in the name of Jesus to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lead us not, Lord, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Forgive us our trespasses as even we forgive others that trespass against us. Help us, lead us, guide us in your way of righteousness and in your way of truth, according to your divine purpose and plan for our lives. God, we touch and agree concerning those who are sick amongst us. We ask you to stretch forth your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal bodies today, God. You know there are those who are starting to 
feel sick as the shift of this atmosphere has increased with all kinds of germs and disease and this pandemic, God, the flu and every other opportunity that the enemy uses to come in and infiltrate. Lord, we ask you to bless and heal and cover. Help us, oh God, restore health and strength to those who are sick and breathe on their lungs for those who are unable to gasp or, or breathe freely without the aid of some sort of oxygen or respiratory aid, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask you to stretch forth your mighty hand to heal. Move heaven and earth on their behalf, Holy One. Break down the COVID virus and destroy its impact in the earth realm, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we cry out, Abba, have mercy on us. Oh mm -hmm. God, if you judged us, who could stand? Have mercy, Almighty King. Let not our sins even be treated as they deserve but have mercy, oh God. We ask you to help us, God, even as we repent, even as we turn from our wickedness, even as we turn from our ungodly ways, God. Forgive us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to lead, uh, lead a life that is pleasing to you. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over those who are dealing with pancreatic cancer and all kinds of prostate, prostate diseases, oh God, and even lupus and MS today and any other form of cancer, breast cancer, Lord God, and lung cancer, all the cancers that are metabolizing throughout people's bodies, we ask you to rebuke the devourer, oh God, on our behalf. We ask you to stretch forth your hand. We ask you to heal in the matches and the mighty name of Jesus, the bodies that are wrecking with pain right now, minds that are worried and anxious and filled with anxiety. God, would you be the peace that they need, Jehovah Shalom. We stretch forth even in the faith, by faith, our hands to heal in accordance with your word. You said we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We, in the name of Jesus, stretch forth our hands, God, to touch and to heal those who are sick in their bodies today. God, that you would touch even those who have arthritis in their knees and arthritis in their shoulders and tension and pain and all kinds of discomfort. Oh God, we're asking you to empower and move through us right now. Let the airways be no impediment to your mighty healing power, God. We lift up those who are in ICU, God, or in a nursing home or in a rehab center that are sick to their body, in their bodies. Holy one, we're asking you to touch and heal in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. God, we can't do this thing without you. You are the great I am. You are the great physician. We need you, almighty King. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over every mind and every heart, even represented on this prayer line, that God, you would move in families where there's discord and where there's dysfunction. God, that you would bring order where there's disorder, that you would bring peace where there's a lack of peace, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus, oh God, over the minds of those who have been attacked in their mental uh, well-being, Lord God. Schizophrenia, we bind that spirit in the name of Jesus and every form of mental illness. We bind in the name of Jesus. We speak even to double-mindedness. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Even to neurological dysfunctions, we say be healed in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we need your divine intervention. Hear our cries, Holy One of Israel. Move in a miraculous way. Break yokes. Destroy the work of the enemy in our lives. We need your divine intervention. We need you to come quickly, Holy God, and do what only you can. Manifest yourself, Holy One. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we do give thanks. We give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, God. We bless you. Minister Glory, can you pray? Yes, sure. Lord God, we thank you for this is the day that you have made, and we thank shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you for my, my sister, Reverend Letty, Lord God. We thank you for everybody that's watching. Oh God, we ask that whatever their needs are, Lord God, whatever their names are, we don't know, but you know. Yes. Lord. So God, we ask it right now that you send out your healing power. Because in your word, the centurion said, send your word, God, and heal my servant. Yes. So God, we know if you did it, then you can do it now. 
Send out your word and heal all of those that are sick and afflicted, Lord God, yes. with whatever illness there is, whatever challenge there is. God, we ask that you that you remove it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We ask, oh God, that those who are suffering, Lord God, with, with cancer and COPD, Lord God, and, and internal bleeding, so oh God. Yeah. We ask that, Lord God, that you heal their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Those who are suffering with ovarian cysts, oh God, we ask that you remove it. God, yeah. we know there's nothing too hard for you. No, Lord. So God, we ask that all those, those people who have been evicted and, and don't know where their next rent is coming from, don't mm. know even know where their next house is going to be, Lord God, or their apartment or wherever they live in, oh God. Yes. We know, Lord God, that you can provide. So we ask him right now in the name of Jesus, provide those people who have a need, a place to live and rent to pay. Oh yes. God, we ask him that reach down in the abundance, Lord God, and provide for them in the name of Jesus. That's why we call you Jehovah Jireh, yes. the God that provides. Oh God, and those that are feeling lonely and, and Lord God, like they have no one to love them and no one to touch them, no one to say I care. Lord God, your name is Jehovah Nisi, the yes. Lord God that loveth. So God, we ask that you stretch forth your hand and give them a word of encouragement, Lord God, yes. even from a stranger. Lord God, we ask that you do it now in the name of Jesus, because we not only know that you can, but we know that you will. Yes. So God, we ask that you do like only you can do. Show up and show out, oh God. Please, show God. yourself strong. We pray for the uh, those people that are suffering, Lord God, with uh, COVD, Lord God, COVID-19. Yes. God, we ask right now that you send your healing power and your mercy Please. and your grace. Please. Lord God, we ask that you reach out and touch them. We ask, Lord God, that you reach out and touch the president, oh God. We ask that you not only heal him, oh God, but you ask, Lord God, that you give him the words to say, Lord God, that will bring unity and, and not separation, oh God. Yes. That will bring love and not hatred. God, yes. we ask right now that you just take over this election, wherever it is, Lord God, that's causing people stress and agony, Lord God, and frustration. God, we ask that you do. You do like you do, oh God. You yes. come in the middle. You take up residence, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh God, and when it's all said and done, you will be glorified. You'll get the glory. Yes. Your people, the people of God will be edified. Yes. So God, we ask that you you bless Letty. Uh, we ask that you bless this ministry, oh God, yes. that go forth, that people will be encouraged, that people will be blessed, people will be saved, and yes. people will go forth in their ministries, in their calling, that only you can do. Yes. So God, we give you praise. We give you glory. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We always want just that, that people's lives would be impacted. We want to invite you, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, to receive him today. Because it's all for not if you don't know him personally. As she shared earlier, uh, Mr. Glory shared, it's our Father who art in heaven. You got to have a personal relationship with him yeah. to get a prayer through like that. So we want to make sure that if there's anyone amongst us who doesn't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, don't let this day pass without making him your Lord. Mm -hmm. Invite him in right now and say yes to him. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried and God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Take control of my life. I repent of my sins. I did. And I'm turning to you. Turning to you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. You used to die for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. For saving my soul. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer, we know your name is now written in God's book, the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven. 
We know that you are now a child of the Most High King. Today is your spiritual birthday. Write this date down and remember it for always. And know that the angels in heaven are rejoicing and we're rejoicing right with them. Amen. We encourage you. Let somebody who loves the Lord know you've given your heart to Christ. And then get connected with a good church. We commend our church, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden is an awesome place where you can grow and learn about the things of God. We have a pastor who's off the chain. Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr. is one of the greatest pastors, I believe, of all times. He has a heart to serve God. And we thank God for him. So if you want to grow and learn, there's, so, there's over 100 ministries that you can connect to. There's something from everybody. from We say from the birth to the grave, there's some ministry for you. So mm -hmm. we encourage you to get connected. If you are uh, interested, you can reach out to me and let me know because I love hearing testimonies about what God is doing in people's lives. Hit me up. Email me at Rev Letty Carr, R E V. L E T T I E C A R R, Rev Letty Carr at whosoever believes.org. I love getting testimonies. I will pray for you, celebrate what God is doing in your life. I will rejoice because it always spurs us on to keep on praying because God is moving. We've seen Him touch so many lives. So we thank everyone for coming today and joining us in prayer. Thank you, uh, Minister Gloria of Keller. What a blessing. Appreciate that word and that prayer. Praise God. And amen. Um, amen. Thank you again, everybody amen. who has been a part of this today. Know that God is hearing our cries. So do not think. Hold on and wait and see. Because in due season, we're going to read. Have a amen. blessed day in the Lord. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow at 3.16 p.m. Amen. Amen.